Charles Nelson Pogue was a Canadian mechanic from Minnesota, and he is a man that is known for a single genius invention, the Pogue carburetor. This device, also known as the Winnipeg carburetor, captured the public's imagination in the 1930s, with claims of unbelievable fuel efficiency, which sparked a frenzy of interest as well as controversy that continues to this very day. Now normally when I cover an invention or a dude like this, I go super in depth on the man behind the invention and then we try and figure out where he got his inspiration and how he stumbled upon this crazy new technology. But unfortunately with Charles Polk, there's not a lot on his early life. Um, it seems like he preferred to work in the shadows, out of the limelight and just like kind of do his own thing and then he let his invention do the talking instead of him like just hyping it up. But what I do know is that he was born near Tin Town in Minnesota in 1897. Now Pogue likely spent his early years surrounded by the realities of life where fuel efficiency held a particular significance due to the potentially limited access and cost considerations. Plus this was the time of the Great Depression and there was a global oil shortage which undoubtedly fueled the public's interest in more economical vehicles. Now whether this context directly inspired Pogue's tinkering with carburetors remains unclear. However, by the mid-1930s Pogue's name became synonymous with a radical invention that promised to revolutionize the automotive landscape. So let's get on to his invention. So back then Pogue filed a series of patents for a device described as a catalytic carburetor or a vaporizing carburetor. These terms hint at a design that potentially manipulated the fuel state or employed a catalyst to enhance combustion, leading to a significant improvement in fuel efficiency. Now I searched everywhere and I can't find the technical info behind how it exactly worked, but similar to the system Tom Ogle made, this seems to have just vaporized the fuel before it made its way into the motor and that somehow boosted the fuel consumption. But with all of that, how good was it? While well, media reports filled with press releases um, and speculation claimed that this device could achieve a staggering 200 miles per gallon or 1.2 liters of fuel per 100 kilometers, which is freaking insane. And this was tested, apparently. In fact, in 1936, Breen Motor Company in Canada tested the Poe carburetor on a Ford V8 coupe and got 26.2 miles on one pint of gasoline. That's over 200 miles per gallon. They said that the performance of the car was 100% in every way and that at speeds of under 10 miles per hour the operation was much smoother than in a standard carbureted powered one. There is even claims that this invention was installed on army tanks throughout World War II. But um, I can't get any sources to prove these claims like I've read some articles that mention this but I can't find an actual factual piece. So if any of you guys know of the actual source that it was used in army tanks, put it down below and then I can go and read it. But let's continue. Now the Poke carburetor was actually available to the public so anybody could buy it. And because of this, there's actually some people out there that do own a Poke carburetor. And I haven't seen one on a car working but I've seen people with the actual carb like on a table but I haven't seen it on a car working unfortunately. I would love to see it working though. But anyways, let, I digress, let's get back to the story. Um, obviously back then, news outlets scrambled to cover the latest developments in the Poe Carb technology, with headlines ranging from the cautiously optimistic to the outright sensational. Fueling the hype were fervent investors eager to capitalize on the promise of the Poe Carburetor. Everybody was excited, except of course the oil giants. In 1936, stock prices for oil plummeted and some believed that that drop in oil stocks were thanks to the Poe Carburetor. Now with all of that, you might wonder what exactly happened to this thing. I mean, if it's so good and it was publicly available, why don't we have it in all of our cars to this day? I mean, I've got a car that runs on fuel, gasoline if in America, and uh, it doesn't have this technology. I would love it if it, is, if it was this light on fuel. So what happened to it? Well, I can tell you I've read more articles on this topic than I would like to admit to, um, and there's a lot of debate surrounding this whole thing. So let's start it off with the conspiracy side of things. Now at the heart of the whole conspiracy are allegations of manipulation, deception and corporate collusion, with skeptics pointing to a series of troubling incidents and red flags that suggest a darker truth lurking beneath the surface. 
central to this narrative is the notion that powerful corporate interests would lose a lot of money from the widespread adoption of this technology, which is true. I mean, if there was a technology that made your car a hell of a lot of lighter on fuel, you would buy less fuel, which means that all the big world companies would lose a lot of money, and in turn, this is bad for business. Um, so it does make sense for oil companies trying to buy it out and suppressing it and stuff. And now adding another layer of intrigue to this whole story is the fact that three of his prototypes got stolen out of his winning pick workshop in 1936. Now all of this does make you wonder, did a big company try and suppress him? Why did they steal these prototypes? And what happened to the man behind this whole project? Well, he didn't like just disappear like many other inventors. He actually had a normal life after this. He decided to distance himself from his invention and he got a job as a manager in an oil filter company, which is where he would work from then on out till the day he retired. So was he bought out or did outside interests force him to leave it all behind? Um, well, let's get into that side of the story. So right around the same time that his prototypes got stolen, um, Pogue was in quite a bit of warm water from the scientific community. You see, they wanted to test and verify the claims that were made on this invention. You see, they say that it was impossible for any device at that time to do what he's claimed to do. They further claimed that the device described by Pogue would not achieve anything close to what he claimed. Then other articles at the time said that the carburetor was too impractical for use in the ordinary course of driving because it was dangerous. These writings pointed out that the Pogue carburetor was liable to explode at any time. Many corporation experts and oil company engineers made public pronouncements on the impossibility of the increase in MPG claimed by the Pogue invention. One oil company engineer even pointed out that gasoline did not nor ever could contain that high a percentage of explosive power. Which is true. You see, energy can't be made. It can only transform which means that one gallon of fuel has a certain amount of energy potential, and even when being 100% efficient, it would not power any car for 200 miles. Anyways, as I said, um, Pogue lived on after this, and that meant that people could ask him questions on the invention, and many did. In fact, people spammed him over the years with letters, with questions, and people just wanting to know what the hell happened and why did it disappear. Now, because of all of this, um, Pogue kind of, started to hate his invention, um, he didn't like all of the attention, he didn't like the fact that people spammed his family house, the invention just kind of destroyed his life at the end, I mean, he just wanted to have a peaceful life and now people were bothering him the whole time. Now he did do a few interviews after he stopped and started working a normal job, and in one of these interviews, Pogue admitted that this carburetor doesn't work, but Pogue did claim to run his own car on one of these carburetors for more than 10 years, but he did deny that his invention ever offered 200 miles to a single gallon of fuel, or even half of that. However, Pogue refused to give the actual number his car got on this carburetor, so he says it, it did work, um, and they lied about the exact number, but he doesn't want to tell us the actual number, which just raises questions. Did it really work and people are telling him to be still? Um, or did it not work even close to that and he's like ashamed of the number I don't understand why he doesn't want to give us the real number it just doesn't make sense in my mind um, let me know your thoughts but let's cut this whole story short this, this video is getting a bit long in my opinion did it work? Um, while I would love to believe that it did work I don't think it did or at least to the extent it was claimed and he technically said that it didn't work to the extent it was claimed he said it didn't even get half of that, so maybe we're on the same page, me and Mr. Pogue. And there's a reason why I say this, it's not just because I'm a doubter or a hater or anything like that, it's because of the maximum potential energy in fuel and how you mix it with air. You see, there's a certain maximum economy mixture of gasoline and air, which is generally considered to be about 16 particles of air to one particle of fuel. If a carburetor delivers this with the air, this is accepted as the best it can do. Actually, the best is only possible under ideal conditions, and this would be in a single cylinder engine where all of the air and all of the fuel from the carb make it to the combustion chamber. But in an actual engine, there's not just one cylinder, and the carburetor has to distribute all the air and fuel to, let's say, six or eight cylinders. And this is not a very precise process. It kind of just follows the air to the, the cylinders that's going to fire next. 
So on the downstroke, it sucks, the air goes in and then fuel goes with it. But it's not like crazy precise. So if you run it on 16 to 1, sometimes it's going to be too lean and the cylinder just wouldn't fire at all. Or some strokes will have more than 16 to 1 and it will be a bit rich on that cylinder. So you can't really lean it out that much because the chances are the car's going to run very crappy. Um, which is why most manufacturers actually back then ran cars on higher fuel mixtures just to make the engine idle and drive a bit better. But remember, he vaporized the fuel and maybe this vaporizing system was, was more precise and they could get the exact amount of fuel particles and air particles into the system and then combustion happened and everything was good. Maybe that's how he did it. Um, I'm going to tell you that's not what happened. Um, 200 miles per gallon or even 100 miles per gallon is still impossible. Fuel just has X amount of energy in it. That's just how it is. You can't make it more no matter how you burn it. So no matter what you do, the potential energy in fuel is still the same. You can just get closer to the max potential, but you can never make more than the max potential, if that makes sense. Now, I will end this video off by saying I don't think this is all complete bullshit. Um, I do think the thing probably did work sort of, and I do think it probably made cars, let's say, 10% lighter on fuel or something like that. But I do think either himself or the media, I'm not going to say it was just him or it was his doing because I don't know, I wasn't there. But through the media and everything, it got exaggerated a lot and I just think it it's not necessarily even his fault. I just think they hyped it up too much and it's just wasn't as good as they said it was at the end of the day but let me know what you guys think do you think i'm full of it do you think his invention did get 200 miles per gallon even though he says himself he didn't um i mean maybe he was forced to say it you never know conspiracy i don't know I i'm gonna read through the comments on this one and i think it's gonna be interesting i think there's a lot of people gonna tell me i'm a dumbass which uh, sometimes i am so maybe you got you guys have got a point um if you guys agree with me Welcome to the corner of the dumbasses. Um, we'll see in the comments. Maybe people just agree with me. Maybe there's nobody that says I'm a dumbass. But from other videos that I've made on previous inventions and stuff, people tend to just think I'm a stupid young child. So we'll see. But yeah, at the end of the video, please let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did like it, um, I've made similar videos to this. I made a video on Bob Lazar's Hydrogen Corvette. I've made a video on Tom Ogle's carburetor the thing and i've made a video on stanley mayer's water gar which is a interesting one but yeah let me know down below what you guys thought if you guys enjoyed this video please have a like and subscribe to the channel and if you guys did like it you'll most plug with some other stuff so just go through my channel see if there's something else like i'll check you guys in the next one cheers eh?